Education with Programming Knowledge. In this video, we'll solve a very popular interview question called as Tucson. This problem really tests your skills in uh, basic data structures and how do you actually use them to find a solution optimally uh, during an interview scenario. So again, uh, this video is going to be about solving this problem and making sure that uh, it is solved in a way in which you would actually do it in a real interview, uh, be it uh, an online screening round or a, a in in person whiteboarding round. So uh, we'll try and make sure that uh, we also approach the problem in a similar way. And yeah, let's get started. So uh, given an array of integers, nums, and an integer target, return the indices of the two numbers is that they add up to target. You may assume that uh, the input would have exactly one solution and you may not use the same element twice and you can return the answer in any order. Okay. So uh, looking at the test case, uh, we have an array nums which is 2, 7, 11, 15 and the target is 9. So we need to find two such elements in the array uh, which sum up to 9 and then we have to return their indices. Uh, indices. So here we have 7 and 2 and these two uh, sum up to 9. and so we return their indices which is 2 and 7, or so sorry, 0 and 1. So similarly, we have 3 to 4, uh, the target is 6, so 4 and 2 should add up to 6. So we uh, return uh, a vector or a array of 1 and 2. Similarly for 3 and 3, uh, which is 6. So first thing, when you see this in an interview round, or when you uh, actually, uh, uh, when the interview actually asks you this question, uh, one thing you can ask is the well, one thing you need to do is clear out your assumptions. So uh, here they did give you this information, but the interview might not give you the information in the interview. So it would be good to ask if uh, the array or the input will have a solution or not. If not, then how to deal with that? Uh, and that would be a good way to actually start uh, you know solving the question. The next would be uh, this one. Uh, this is an arbitrary uh, piece of information, but still. Uh, if the interviewer wants you to actually run the code, then this might actually be helpful if you want the answer in any order or not. Great. The next thing which you need to see is the constraints or ask the interviewer about the constraints. Uh, what can be the maximum length of the uh, array because that is going to affect uh, the time complexity and whether, uh, you know, uh, can you use uh, another array, another data structure or do you have to only use this and do it in place. So you have to ask both and depending upon that, the time complexity and the space complexity will change. So make sure you ask that. And yeah, so once you have that information or you know, you can also ask that information during the uh, process of solving it. So you'll be in the best case, uh, best uh, position to actually answer it uh, properly. So let's get started and see how we can, you know, uh, solve this problem. So the first thing which comes to my mind uh, when I see this is a brute force solution. And as, uh, and as I've said in my previous videos, always start with a brute force solution uh, to your problem even if you know uh, the optimized solution because uh, one uh, this uh, gives you uh, gives the interviewer an idea that you are able to give at least one solution one right solution uh, right off your mind uh, and it doesn't matter if it's not optimized in the first go uh, because uh, you know uh, it doesn't uh, the interviewer doesn't expect you to actually you know give give the correct answer every single time so make sure that uh, the answer, uh, the first thing which you uh, talk about is the brute force solution and then you know work your way up to the optimized solution. So first, uh, the brute force solution for here would be to loop through the entire array uh, twice. Uh, once, first you get the first number. So for each x, find whether uh, the complementary or uh, the target minus that number exists. So uh, for two, uh, Try to find if target minus 2, so 9 minus 2 exists in the array. So you have two for loops there. Uh, and keep doing that for the entire array and try to find if that number exists. Uh, in that way, you will be uh, able to solve the problem, but it will be uh, taking a time complexity of O of n square because for every element, you're checking all the other elements and seeing if they actually fit together as a pair uh, to get the target as the sum. The next thing uh, which uh, you need to know is the space complexity. So here, since uh, we are not using anything more than uh, saving the indices, just two indices, uh, the space complexity will be of one. Uh, so that is one possible solution where uh, you have the most optimized space complexity, which is of one, but you're really suffering with the time complexity, which is of n square. So uh, how will we, you know, improve our time complexity here? So we need a more efficient way uh, to check if the complement or you know target minus that number exists in the array. 
and if uh, the complement exists then we need to look up its index because we need to return the index so uh, what is the best way to actually maintain a mapping of the you know element in the array to its index and that uh, gives you uh, the idea of a hash table or hash map right so we can use a hash map where uh, we uh, check the hash map whether it has the complement or the target minus that number in the hash map if it does then we can just uh, you know uh, have its index as the value of that key value pair in a hash map and return that and if that number uh, does not if the complement does not exist in the hash map then we actually insert it to the hash map so let's uh, see how we can you know uh, code this up so in c++ uh, you can use an unordered map so un ordered map which is going to be an int and we'll be looking up uh, the elements so it'll be a lookup Make sure that your variable names are appropriate, uh, not just x and y and z, because that does matter in an interview. And make sure you try to follow all the uh, popular coding conventions of a language, where you know you have camel case for C++, you have uh, underscores for uh, underscores for Python. So you just make sure that you you know know of them. You don't have to use them, but you know make sure that you try to use them whenever you can. Next is that we need to return a vector here because I'm using C++. So let's have a vector of int called as answer the next thing which we need to do is loop through the entire array so int i equal to 0 i less than nums dot size i plus plus now uh, next let's calculate the complement for each element in the array so int uh, complement equal to target minus nums of i so uh, let me clear out uh, complement uh, here so uh, let's say uh, you want to find uh, 2 and 7 or 0 and 1 here so uh, when you are at 2 uh, you get the complement which is 9 minus 2 7 then you look for 7 in the array and if you find 7 then you have two numbers that actually add up to 9 if you don't then there is then you move on to the next one which is 11 so you go 9 minus 2 which is 7 not 11 so on to the next one and so on and so forth that is what the complement is here next what you have to do is you do if uh, lookup dot find uh, complement uh, not equal to lookup dot end so uh, if it's so this is whether we found the complement so this is when you actually find your pair 2 and 7. Uh, so I won't write that first, but I'll first write uh, the insertion logic. So if you don't find it, then you have to insert it in the hash map, right? So uh, we do you look up dot insert and you're inserting a pair where the pair is the number and its index. So it's going to be make pair nums of i comma i. And at the end, when you have your answer, you just return answer because that's what we are returning. Now let's write the logic for uh, the meat of the problem. So if you find a pair, then what do you do? So first thing what you do is you uh, append it or push back, uh, sorry, push back uh, the index of uh, the number which you're trying to find. So the index of seven, which is you know one so we do lookup complement and the next thing which you need to add to your answer array is the current index which is for two so it is answer dot push back and it's going to be i and when you find your answer you just have to break out of the loop and the return is going to return your answer so uh, let's see what we did here. So, uh, to improve uh, our time complexity from the brute force solution, which had an O of O of n square, uh, we required a more efficient way to check if the complement exists in the array, and if it's if it exists, then we look up its index. And the best way to uh, maintain that mapping of you know the element, uh, the array element and its index is a hash map uh, or a hash table. So, we use an unordered map here in C++. And in that way, we were able to actually loop through the entire uh, array, fill up the hash table, 
and only pick up the elements that you want uh, which form a pair uh, which sum up to the target so uh, what can be this time complexity and space complexity for this so uh, in the worst possible case uh, if your uh, pair is at the beginning and at the end of the array then you will have to fill up the entire hash table uh, which is going to be of n so your time space complexity will be of n and since you're just uh, uh, searching the array once and uh, the time complexity to find uh, or you know do a find in a hash table is of one the time complexity is going to be for the entire uh, problem going to be of n so that's uh, what you have here you have an o of n time complexity and of n space complexity uh, for your problem so let's run this code and see if this works so yeah uh, let's submit and we should be able to see that it is accepted great so this is how you solve two sum uh, on lead code and uh, thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one